Good morning all. In the previous video, we started our discussion with the index properties of soil which included particle size, plasticity features and relative density. We discussed what particle size distribution curve is, we discussed what sieve analysis is and we discussed a few terms including the effective size, coefficient of curvature, uniformity coefficient, etc. We'll continue our discussion on the particle size distribution curve. Now, if you recollect back, you would probably remember that the last size that was included in the sieve analysis was 75 micron and below which you have the pan. So the soil that passes through the 75 micron is retained on the pan because you don't have an option to sieve it further. 75 micron is a pattern the smallest sieve size that we have in the market and it will not be quite logical to have a sieve size which is, which is still smaller than 75 micron because the particle that passes through 75 micron is too powdery and we use the hydrometer analysis based on the sedimentation principle to classify and grade the soil of that powdery nature. A typical hydrometer is shown here, it has a bulb portion, a neck portion and a stem portion. Now the hydrometer is fundamentally used to determine the specific gravity G of liquids and also for grain size distribution of particles passing through 75 micron size. Now this hydrometer you may have probably seen it at least as a schematic picture in petrol bungs, gas stations etc where they use this as a symbol to ensure that the quality of petrol or the diesel or any gas in general is represented using this symbol. Uh, this specifies the specific gravity or this specifies the density indirectly or in short it specifies the quality of the, the, the petroleum product that you are about to purchase. So it has a long stem, a neck, and a bulb portion and it works on the principle of Stokes law. Just for us to refresh, Stokes law gives the terminal velocity of a sphere settling in a fluid of infinite extent or length. And you would probably remember that there's a tug of war between the drag force which retards the moment movement due to the gravitational force and after a certain time the velocity with which the sphere that is settling in the fluid of infinite extent becomes constant. So that velocity is called as terminal velocity. And this is just for us to refresh what Stokes law is. So Stokes law fundamentally said that the diameter of a particle d in centimeter with specific gravity g falling through a height of h e in centimeters in time t in minute is given by d is equal to this expression. Now the units are clearly mentioned here d in centimeters, t in minute and h e in centimeters because when you substitute these values in these units specified you can use the value 0 0.3 here or else it will be different. Now fundamentally hydrometer analysis is sedimentation analysis and it's based on the slope slope. So the procedure is very simple. Now before moving into the procedure, uh, this is just for us to remind you about the units. G should be in centimeter per second square when you use this expression and rho w is the density of water in gram per cc. Mu is the dynamic viscosity of water in pious where 1 pious is equal to 0 0.1 newton second per meter square. So this equation is applicable only if you have these units employed in expression. So you'll get d in centimeter when you follow the units mentioned here. The procedure is quite simple. You have to take the soil which is passing through the 75 micron size and it is mixed with water in a standard method and is filled in a cylindrical container like this. So I have a cylindrical container which has a marked capacity of 1 liters 
and we take 50 grams of soil and it's properly mixed with distilled water and it's poured onto a cylindrical container up to one liter capacity. Now subsequently at the start of the test the soil and the water will be of a uniform mixture because just before you start the experiment you mix it thoroughly by shaking the container and once you shake the container there will be a uniform distribution of the soil throughout the slurry or throughout the suspension. Hence specific gravity at that point is uniform. So just before the start of the test you should ensure that the color is uniform for the mixture and it means that every particle is uniformly distributed along this depth. But as time flows, the sedimentation takes place and hence a lower layer of liquid in the container will have a higher specific gravity than the upper layer which means the suspension that you have in the lower layers will be denser compared to the suspension that you have in the upper layers. So hydrometer basically shows the specific gravity of the suspension near the center of the bulb, this line. So as time progresses, specific gravity of the suspension around the bulb decreases because the soil particle settles down and the hydrometer goes deeper and deeper into the suspension. So in short, as, as time progresses, the hydrometer goes deeper into the suspension and hence a hydrometer reading which we mark as RH decreases and the effective depth HE increases. Now the value of HE at each time interval T is used to get the particle size distribution curve. Now the total output that we have from this experiment is just this HE and T. So at certain time intervals you have to find out the effective height which is based on the reading of hydrometer. Now once the particle size distribution of the particles passing to 75 micron is obtained by the hydrometer analysis, it is appropriately combined to the plot of the sieve analysis. Which means, for example, if you have used 3 kilograms of soil for sieve analysis and you have around 60, 60 grams of soil passing 75 micron, you don't use that 60 grams. Instead what you do is you just use 50, 50 grams which is standard for hydrometer analysis. So once you have the particle size distribution of that 50 grams, you can extrapolate that to fit 60, 60 grams of the soil which was in the original state. So by doing that you can, you can actually have a combined plot of the sieve analysis and the hydrometer analysis. And the percentage finer n is given by the expression 100 into g by g minus 1 r by ms where r is a hydrometer reading and ms is a mass of soil solids. So this figure shows that as time progresses from t equal to t1 to t2 to t3 to t4 the hydrometer goes deeper and deeper into the suspension and the effective height he increases. Now, there are three corrections included in the hydrometer analysis. Meniscus correction, temperature correction and dispersion agent correction. Now meniscus correction is positive correction which means that when you have the hydrometer's stem immersed into the water, it will form a meniscus. The water will form a meniscus like this. And the reading that you take is at the top level, whereas the true reading will be at the bottom level because that is a water level. Because of this meniscus that is formed by water, you will take a reading that is above the water level whereas the true reading is at the water level. 
like this you have the correct reading here and what you take is the incorrect reading here and hence it will be a positive correction now the second reading second correction is a temperature correction now a hydrometer is calibrated at 27 degrees standard temperature so if the temperature that you have at your lab is greater than 27 degrees the suspension that you use here will be lighter and the hydrometer will go deeper into the suspension so the actual reading will be less than the corrected reading and hence you have a positive correction vice versa when you have the temperature less than 27 degrees celsius the suspension will be a bit stiffer and the hydrometer will not go deep instead it will have a tendency to get suspended above the actual reading so the actual reading could be greater than the corrected reading and you'll have a negative correction the third one is a dispersion agent correction which is a negative correction the dispersion agent is the one that you use into mixing the 50 grams of soil with water the dispersion agent is usually sodium hexametaphosphate and its function is to make sure that the soil particles are not flocculated and it is properly dispersed and act as single units so the dispersion agent is added to have the proper suspension or dispersion of the soil particles in the slurry and the dispersion agent increases the specific gravity of the suspension and so the actual reading will be greater than the corrected reading so you take a negative correction so meniscus correction in short is positive dispersion agent correction in short is negative and temperature correction can either be negative or positive depending on the temperature that you use at your lab so the standard temperature being 27 degrees celsius now you have the second index property which is a relative density this is applicable to cohesion less soil or sand in general so sandy soil has got this relative density as a predominant index property it's also called as a density index and it gives an idea about the denseness or the packing of the sandy soil and it signals the behavior of a soil under loading the theory is quite simple you have again the basic three phase system diagram where you take volume of the solids is equal to one and the volume of voids will be e so i have three figures here number one is e minimum number two is a normal e number three is a maximum voids ratio so let's assume that your situation is here you have volume of solids is equal to one and volume of voids obviously will be equal to e so when it's packed to the maximum density you will have e minimum and when it's loosely packed you will have e maximum like this so density index or the relative density is e max minus e minimum i'm sorry e max minus e by e max minus e minimum which means e max minus e by e max minus e minimum it signals your position of the soil within the spectrum of the density it can attain so e is the void ratio in your present case and the soil can have a least void ratio like this or a maximum void ratio like this so in that spectrum of void ratios or in that spectrum of densities where does your soil stand that is the relative density now in terms of density it is equal to rho minus rho minimum by rho max minus rho minimum multiplied by rho max by rho so this is a representation using void ratio and this is a representation using density higher the void ratio lesser will be the density or e maximum will correspond to rho minimum and e minimum will correspond to rho
So if I may quote an analogy based on your academic performance, let's assume that you scored 50 marks in an examination where your class topper has scored 100 marks and another unfortunate student who didn't perform well at least in this examination scored just 20 marks. So you are somewhere in between the spectrum of 20 to 100. You are at 50. So that can be represented as 100 minus 50 by 100 minus 20. So that turns out to be approximately uh, 60 62 percentage. So that is your relative score or in terms of soil it gives you the denseness or packing denseness of packing. Now based on the value of relative density you can have very low soil whose relative density is around 15 percentage to very dense soil whose relative density is of around 85 to 100 percentage so medium loose dense etc are notations that is based on the term relative density which is a very important index property of cohesion less soil or sandy soil